Hello everyone and welcome back to the Class 47 Peter YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be taking a look at the HAA MGR hopper wagons from Hornby. <laughs> Now for years I've been wanting a rake of HAA wagons for the layout. As I'm sure for those of you who watch my videos you'll all know I have a couple of class 56s, I've got a class 60 and a class 58. But the only wagons I have suitable for them to pull are the shell oil tankers, the FNA wagons and a variety of ballast wagons. As well as of course the flangeway snow plows and the, also the network rail track cleaning wagon. But I did need some more rolling stock to go behind those locomotives to be honest and with that in mind as well as the fact that I've wanted a rake of HAAs for a very long time I decided to bite the bullet and treat myself and so here in front of you I have 15 of these HAA wagons which is going to be a rake long enough for me now I'm not going to be taking a look at all these wagons because they're all the same wagon so it's pointless really looking at them all because they're the same wagon all the detail is going to be the same so I'll get one of these wagons unboxed and then we'll get it down on the layout and we'll have a look So here we are down on the layout and I've moved to a, another section of the layout for today's video for a change. So one of the wagons has been unboxed as you can see. Now they didn't all come from one place. Ten of the wagons came from Collitz models and the remaining five came from Sawyer models. And in total the amount of money I paid for this rake of wagons was it worked up to 300 quid. I know some people think that that's a lot of money to spend on wagons but at the end of the day if you want super detail and you want rags of wagons such as the HAAs and some of these other modern era wagons then you are going to have to spend the money that's always going to be the way because it is an expensive hobby it's never been cheap but then if you think about it 300 quid for these wagons actually comes cheap because if you want to spend the money on the upcoming Cavalax Models HAAs which are being made for KMS Railtech and Trans for You, to get just 15 of those is going to cost a lot more money, which is the reason why I've gone for the Hornby ones. So 300 quid actually works out cheaper. And also I think 300 quid for these I think I got a bit of a bargain because the 10 I bought from Collitz Models are actually on offer. They were reduced to £19 rather than the 22 quid per wagon. So had they not been reduced at that price I think I would have ended up paying a bit more for these wagons actually so I think 300 quid is a bargain for these wagons. So now we move on to the detail. So first of all we have spool metal buffers. We've also got a NEM pocket with a dovetail connector which has a tension lock coupling in both ends of the wagon. Now I don't use the tension locks anymore as you all know, I use the hunk couplings. Eventually at some point all the wagons will have hunk couplings fitted but that's something to do in the future. So for the time being the one wagon that gets coupled beyond the loco will have a hunk coupling and the rest will have the NEM couplings. The wagon also has metal wheels as you can see which is brilliant because they're much better than the plastic wheels. They will still pick up some dirt but in my experience they don't pick, us, pick up as much dirt as plastic wheels. With the plastic wheels I find they build up a lot more dirt and then they get gunked up and then they don't run as freely to be honest. And you can see the separately fitted detail underneath the wagon chassis there which isn't moulded 
that's all separately fitted. So now I'm going to do something I've never done before when reviewing any wagon. I'm going to push it along the rails and see how far it goes. So this is just a test to see just how freely and smoothly that this wagon runs. And the wagon has gone as far as the level crossing. So it's passed that test with flying colours. So that's brilliant. On the wagon body, we have got some nice rivet detail, which looks superb. We've also got the warning signs. And the printing of those is very nicely done, and they are legible, you can read them. Though you might need a magnifying glass to do so. You've also got HAA there, crisply applied on the sides. And you've also got the data panel there as well again crisply applied on the body of the wagon. On the wagon chassis we also have a builder's plate which is printed onto the chassis but it does look really nice and you can read it as well. Moving on to the wagon cradle which is this part of the wagon here. Now the livery is supposed to be rail freight red. It is painted a red colour however the shade of the red is incorrect. It should be a more, I guess you could say, a more brighter shade of red. So the shade of red is wrong, so if you're bothered by that, you could repaint the cradle if you wish, though not something you should have to do. But, you know, I still think it's a nice shade of red. <laughs> and also, we do have some more printing on the cradle as well, which again is fantastic. For the detail on the wagon chassis we have the axle boxes which are painted red. You've also got the springs as well. You've also got the brake as well. And you've got all this other detail there under the chassis which is all separately fitted. Again that is not moulded as you can see. And I think that looks superb. And I do like that some of these detail parts has also been painted. Now all the HAAs that I have have the canopy attached on them. When we do do the variants without the canopies on them as well as the ones that do have the canopies. However, the canopies on these are removable as I shall demonstrate. You will have to excuse my hands being in the road, there we go. So as you can see, the canopies are removable. Now they are glued on. So you can see there are some glue marks there. But to be honest, that's not going to really matter, to be honest. I mean, you could either wipe the glue marks off somehow, or paint over them. But I'm not going to be too fussed by that to be honest because most of the time you're going to see the camera flat down like this so you won't really notice those glue marks which you can only just about notice as I turn the camera into the light I mean these wagons they do look good with the canopies on them as you can see to excuse it rolling away because it's on a slight slope but I do prefer them without the canopies so I shall be removing the canopies on these wagons but I'm not going to be throwing the canopies away I shall be putting them to one side for the future in case I may decide to use them again on this end of the wagon we have the generator and that detail has been separately applied, it's not moulded on and you've even got the pipework detail as well coming out of that and that little bit of detail looks stunning and then on the other end of the wagon we have the auto unloading gear and again that detail is separately fitted, it's not moulded on 
and that looks stunning. I'm also going to quickly show you the detail that's on the inside of the wagon which includes rivet detail. So that now brings me on to my conclusion for the Hornby HAA merry go round topper wagon. So my conclusion is I think that this is a great model. I mean if we take away to one side that the cradle of the wagon in this livery is painted in the wrong shade of red the detail on this model is stunning and to finally be able to have a rake of these on the layout that's made me happy because I had fond memories of these wagons being hauled by class 60s, 58s, 56s and later on 66s they were also pulled by class 20s, 47s and 37s as well so I've now got some more stock to pull for those locomotives so I'm happy there and I know that some people are thinking well 15 wagons it's only half a rake but at the end of the day it's still a rake I mean I don't necessarily have to have the full prototypical rake of these wagons running around on the layout I mean I know I've got a big layout but I think as a push I might just about be able to squeeze a full prototypical rake of these wagons on here but then at the end of the day it's storing the wagons you know to keep them when I'm not being using them somewhere and it's also going to be more expensive it's going to be more money which that money I'd rather go on other things so I think 15 wagons it's still going to look awesome behind a class 56 or whatever and it's still going to be pleasing to see these wagons being pulled around by the layout behind one of those locomotives so 15 wagons for me is enough to be honest so I'm quite pleased with these wagons and I'm really glad that I finally got my hands on some I will be putting coal loads in these wagons and I'm also going to get one of these wagons and detail the one end to put the detail on and stuff and as I said earlier in the video I will be fitting them with hunt couplings as well but those are something to do in the future so for the now the wagons are going to be left as they are so I definitely recommend the HAA wagons, whether it's the Hornby ones, the Super Detail ones, or if you want to spend less money, there's the Railroad ones, or there's the upcoming KMS Rail Take and Trains for You ones, which are being made by Cavalax. So what I'm going to do now, to finish off the review, I'm going to get my rake of HAAs running on the layout, being pulled by one of my Class 56s. So I can't wait to do that. This has been something I wanted to do for years and now I can finally do it. So thank you for watching this video and I hope you've enjoyed. As ever, don't forget to subscribe if you like what you see. Feel free to post a comment and hit the like button. Check out all my other videos I have on the channel. And I'll see you again next time. But until then, stay safe, take care and happy modelling. Goodbye. Right viewers, so there is an admission I will just make at this point. So all 15 of my wagons are now on the layout, hooked up to one of my 56s. Now my plan was to remove all of the canopies on all the wagons. I've got a load of the canopies that I've removed here. However, in the rake there are three there are three wagons that still have the canopies on them. Now there is a good reason for this and that's because the, those wagons, the canopies, I found they were more harder to remove. The rest of the wagons were easy. I had no problems removing the canopies there but with the three that still have the canopies on them to be honest they were harder to remove and I got scared of breaking them. So I've decided to leave them as they are but I actually do quite like the rake as it looks now because it actually does look quite interesting to have a couple of wagons in the rake with the canopies on because that did happen in real life obviously there were wagons that did have canopies on them and in some rakes you did see wagons with and without the canopies and so I actually think that looks quite interesting